Good morning, my name is John Stover. Today we are talking about web content management using SharePoint 2007 for the SUG.org's weekly video. We're actually going to do a quick little demonstration of the SUG.org's website to kind of highlight some of the out-of-the-box capabilities that come with web content management features on SharePoint 2007. The first thing I'm actually going to do is log in to the forms-based authentication. I'm just doing this to demonstrate that it does not have to be an Active Directory authentic authentication to log into SharePoint to do the web content management. You can use forms-based authentication. You can see now that I'm logged in, I have, you know, my profile is showing up. I'm seeing some of the uh, customized content based upon my authentication. And also with the site actions menu, because this site is built on the publishing template that comes out of the box with SharePoint 2007, I see some of the edit page, create page, create site, some of the tools that you may not be used to seeing if your sites are not based upon the publishing features that come with SharePoint. The first thing we're going to do is very quickly create a new page. You know, this is the SUG, we'll say demo page. SharePoint's going to recommend a page name for us. You'll notice that it's not using, you know, uh, query string variables or a question mark 527Q9 to actually name the pages. You get to pick the name of the ASPX page. That's going to help with readability, usability, and also a search engine optimization. And then I can pick the page layout or the page template that I want to create this piece of content based upon. I'll just create an article page with some summary links. And when I click create, a couple of things happen. First and foremost, it's creating a draft version of this page, and it's storing this particular page in the pages library. One of the features that come with the web content management features in SharePoint is a specialized library called Pages that stores these uh, individual content pages in. Because it's using a SharePoint library, you have a lot of flexibility and all of the same tools that you have with other types of libraries. You have the check-in, check-out check capabilities, you have version history, but as far as the actual uh, template, this particular template, you know, gives us a title that we're going to have across the top of the page. Uh, I can put a date associated with this, so, you know, we'll say 8-31-2009, the byline, you know, by John Stover. And then as far as the content area, SharePoint comes out of the box with a WYSIWYG web-based HTML editor. This allows me to, you know, place my content here. And I can, you know, put as much content as needed. And it'll keep expanding to, you know, let me put all of the content that I need to in this particular area. Once I'm done actually editing this particular page, at the top in this little page editing toolbar, I have a publish capability. If I click publish, this is actually going to publish this particular page live immediately to the internet. And you'll notice in the URL at the top, it's the sug.org slash pages slash this is the sug demo page dot ASPX. That is the page that we just created. If I actually want to edit that page, you know, there's not a back-end admin area that I have to go to with SharePoint. I can use the Site Actions menu, go click Edit Page, and this will check this page out exclusively to me, and then let me edit this page so I can change, you know, the title, the sub.org, and I can change all of the content as well within the Content Editor area. And based upon this template, there's also summary links where I could actually, you know, create new links you know, I want to put a link to Bing and the link URL, bing.com, hit OK, and that's going to actually add links. So when I republish this page, I'll have my updated content, my updated title, as well as my list of links on this particular page. Obviously, because this is built on SharePoint, I have a lot of other capabilities here. I have, you know, from a page level, the ability to check in, check out, discard checkouts, look at page settings. The page settings is where I can change the title, I can change the publication start date, the publication end date, 
And I can also actually change the page layout associated with this particular page. We'll get a little more into that on uh, future videos. I can start workflows. If there are some workflows associated with this automatically, obviously they'll launch as part of the publishing process regardless. And then also things such as, you know, the server side spell check, preview in a new window, checking for unpublished items will actually look for links and images and media on this page that you know I may be linking to or maybe using that have not yet gone through the approval process on their individual areas. And then I can also check my version history, do a text comparison, and look at the recycle bin here as well. I'm done editing this particular page, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click publish. And now this is our updated page that we've just created. Now I'll go edit one more page on the site just to kind of show you uh, a little different page layout or page level template and show that the tools are basically the same even though the template may be a little bit different. So if I go to the home page of the site and click edit page, you'll notice that I have the same type of capabilities. I have that same page editing toolbar at the top. I have the same you know, uh, uh, tools available to me. However, this particular page is using the Telerik free SharePoint editor for the WYSIWYG HTML editor. And we also have the capability of using different web parts on this page because this page layout has a few different web part zones available. So in this our particular case, we have a recent updates web part. We have some web parts that are showing how many current discussions are going on, how many members are currently in the site, how many bloggers. And just like using you know, a team site or any other SharePoint environment where I have web part zones available, you know, I can use the drag and drop capabilities of web parts to actually change the order if I want the bloggers list to be at the top of the page and then members and then discussions. Or if I wanted a highlighted weekly video to actually be over in a different web part zone, I can drag it over and you know, change the content layout on the page, add other web parts and utilize some of the other tools available. If I don't want to save any of these changes, all I have to do is go to the page editing toolbar at the top, click discard checkout, click OK, and this is going to revert to the published version of the page that was prior to me actually checking this page out. So all I wanted to do was give a very quick high level overview of some of the features that come out of the box with SharePoint with web content management publishing features. We'll be digging into some more of these on how to create page layouts, how to create templates, and how to use some of the more advanced features in future videos. So please check this out and leave comments.